guys, thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about a new brand to me um, that I found on Ulta Beauty's website and it is called Whoosh Beauty. And the concept with this line, I think, is making beauty very easy. It's taking different techniques that some people might find very tedious and they're trying to, I think, create some easier ways to go about it. So I've purchased multiple products from this line and today I'm going to be applying them for you and just showing you how a look comes about with these different things. One of the products I got is the Fold Out Face, which is a whole lot of products in one there. I also got their Corner Eye Stamper Brush, which is a very unique product, and also their Mascara and the Lash Shield. And I got their um, Spin On Lip Gloss as well, which has an interesting little twist. No pun intended. But interesting thing about this line, I do watch the Today Show and I'm familiar with Bobby Thomas who comes on there and talks to like Kathy Lee and Hoda about beauty finds and stuff. And so she is one of the people behind this brand. And I think I'd looked into this brand a while back but didn't actually end up purchasing anything and then was reminded of it again when I saw that it came to Ulta's website. So as you can see by the look that was created here, it's kind of designed to be quick, easy, no fuss makeup. So we'll see if everything in this line really made life easier. So take a look. So the thing I'm going to start out with is called the fold out face and it says on the box that this is the complete daily makeup routine. Everything you need in one place and I got mine in the shade medium light. So it has a little magnetic closure here. It opens up and you can see some of the face powders here. There are two things called blenders, just basically face powders and then two blushes and a highlight. And yes, it's the most shiny mirrored palette ever. And then this flap lifts up. You've got a mirror underneath and more product here. Your eyeshadow shadows, contour, and concealers. Now, I didn't know this was going to be part of this little set, but it's like a smallish four-in-one brush. You've got an angled flat top brush, a fluffy brush that could be used for face powders, and then they sort of come apart, and you've got this other little brush. The connector um, gives you like a smallish concealer brush and an eyeshadow crease looking brush. So at least for my eyes, this isn't going to be everything I use from this brush, but just wanted to show you that's there, and I will be reaching for that at times. Another little thing to point out here there is a flap and this came like as a sticker basically they said peel this off and put this over the perfectors so they give you this little guy here it's not necessarily gonna prevent anything from drying out but I guess just keep shadows from getting in with those creamy concealers so I am glad there was some consideration made there since you have creams in the midst of powders and also it was really important I think for them to have that flap there so you don't have those dark eye shadows butting right up against your light face powder when this is all closed. So there were some good decisions made, I think, in terms of the design. The cost overall on this is $59. And oh, it does show the brush online. I don't know how I missed the fact that the brush was included here, but um, it says go from this to this in just five minutes. And then they do very much walk you through every step of the process. So I've already been using this a little bit. I'm kind of familiar with what this is going to do for me. So right now my skin is moisturized and I'm going to be using these perfectors um, just kind of to basically basically be my foundation, my base. I'm going to start with the darker of the two and actually start just patching this around um, my under eye area, anywhere where I have discoloration. With a creamy concealer, I think you got to be really careful. You know, you don't want them so thick that they're hard to blend, especially if it's something like this where it may work all the way around your skin as a foundation. But you don't want them to be so thin that they're not going to cover anything. So these seem to be a pretty easy to blend product. So I put the deeper one around there and then I'm going to layer the lighter on top for brightness. So as you can see, I'm focusing on my main kind of problem areas, which would be the under eye and any discoloration um, that I might have kind of out in this area on top of the cheek. I'm also going to do a little lightness up in here. And then I kind of liked using this um, number three brush that's the flat top. It's like not as big as a Sigma F80, but definitely larger than, let's say, some of those uh, Sigma Precision brushes that they have. And I just dab over this and it gives me a pretty dang good um, coverage level there on the under eye. Again, layering both of the shades. I think it kind of brings me to my perfect shade when I layer them both. And yeah, sometimes you can just go too light with concealers and simply lighten your discoloration. So keep in mind going for like a skin tone match on your darkest areas and then layering a lighter concealer on top can sometimes really help you out there. Brush is shedding just a little bit. I didn't notice that the first time I used it. 
And there isn't any eye primer that comes with this kit, so I am going to go ahead and like put the lighter of the two concealer shades on my lid. Before when I've used this, I've just put on my Milani eyeshadow primer, but we'll see how this goes. Here's the trouble with this brush for me. The, the quality of the brush heads I think are nice, but see how loose it is? Like it's kind of wobbly and they want to come off from one another. So I'm just sort of going to detach that part now. I'm going to move on to the powder brush side and I'm actually going to go over to the blender and use the lighter of the two blender powders just to kind of set my under eye here. So I'm kind of using this kit somewhat according to my own rules, you know, the instructions actually have you starting with eyes and that's just not really what I love to do, so I'm just going to use it my way. So again, lighter of the two blender powders, um, using that almost like under eye setting powder and then I'm going to use the other one here elsewhere on the face. Next up, we've got this little contour highlight duo, and I'm going to use the contour color. This is a really nice shade for contouring, by the way. i going to apply this to the hollows of my cheek. And I'm trying to go fairly quick with this. I don't want to make the application too tedious because that's just not what this product is about. It's about like a quick kind of all-in-one, out-the-door type look. And I do think the color tones in here for choosing the medium light option, they're very appropriate, you know, like the concealer shades seem really good for me. And I just ordered this online, you know, um, and the contour colors are the right depth as well. And then I'll take a little bit of this lighter shade with that same brush and give myself a little added brightness right here on top of the cheeks and down the nose. That's a very mattifying powder too, right there. I feel like my bun has just fallen further and further off to the side. I'm really loving these cheek products right here. There's a beautiful pink blush. It's matte, um, kind of a corally blush with a little bit of a golden sheen and a wonderful highlight. So today I think I'm gonna go with the coral blush. They're very pigmented, so just dab the brush in, tap off the excess, and again, a nice brush size here because um, you know it can work for blush, it's small enough to work for blush, but it did my contour, it can easily do the all over face powder, so that was a smart size to include, I think. And then the highlight is right here, so I'll just dab into that, and yeah, I am gonna go ahead and just use the same brush. Really, really pretty highlighter there. Like, totally quality highlight. I love that. It's very pearly, but the blushes themselves aren't too shimmery. Even the one with glow, like, isn't too overboard, so you can really control the amount of shimmer you have with your look. And then they do say these powders over here, which I did use them earlier, but they can be used kind of as a finishing powder, which I don't know that I'm going to really do a lot of that. Maybe I'll just do a light amount of this lighter shade here and just buff over. So I just did my brows. Um, there's not a brow product included with the kit. But anyways, for the eyes, you'll recall, I put um, some of the Perfector shade, the lighter one, just all over my lid to give myself a little bit of a base. We'll see how that wears throughout the day. But in the past, I've pulled in Milani eyeshadow primer and the shadows have stayed fine. I don't really have a concern there. But first off, I'm gonna go into the contour shade, actually. This is the face contour, and I think it makes a great um, starting point for the eyes. So I'm just going to use my Sigma E25 brush and get that in my crease. If you even wanted to skip the actual eyeshadow shades altogether that they give you in this palette, you would still have what you needed to do an eye look here because you got like a light matte shade, this medium shade. Okay, just blend that out a little bit here with a blending brush. Then I'm going to use the color called Base just a light matte cream. I'm sorry, every time I hold up the palette, it's so reflective. I feel like it's really hard to see. I'm sorry. Then I'm going to do some of that same um, creamy base shade right here on the inner part of the eye. And then I'll do a little bit of this brown, the define color, right out here on the outer part of my lid. Pigmentation wise on these shadows, I mean, they're good. I would say they are probably geared toward the everyday makeup user and that they're not scary to use. I'll do a little bit of this color called Shine right here 
I'll dab a little bit of that kind of on the center of my lid. You know, it's a pretty subtle shade, but then again, I think about the purposes behind this, and it is every day, and it's kind of something anybody could pick up and just work with. Now, I'm gonna pull in another product that I bought here, and it's called the Corner Brush Eye Stamper. And this is a really, really interesting concept. See that angle right there on that brush? So you stamp that on your outer corner, and then you've got this just more traditional, kind of a wide-angled brush that you're supposed to be able to use to kind of blend things out. So let's look at the instructions here. Here's the step one. See how they're putting it kind of where you might do an outer V with your eye look? So you stamp it and then you take this other angled side. It says use the smudger brush to gently drag and fill inward using your mark from step one as a guide. So this is not the first time I've used this product and I'll tell you right now, if you are already really comfortable with like doing outer V's and you've got certain brushes you like to use to bring your shadow upward and you can do it fairly easily and you're not looking for a new method, uh, this is not gonna make life really any easier for you. I see where they're coming from with the stamp idea, like it really is going to maybe allow for some really symmetrical placement of the shadow, but blending it out from there can be a little trickier. It has been a little tricky for me, and it's kind of one of those things that I look at and say, well, I could, probably could have done this quicker with the crease brushes I'm used to using, but I'm going to show you um, how this works. So I'm going to go into the Define shade, this brown color. I've stamped the brush directly in there, made sure to get product on every part of the brush, and then I'm going to put it right here on the outer part of my eye. See what it stamps down there? Then I'm gonna use the other side of the brush, which is just a regular flat angled brush, and this is where I kinda of have some trouble getting this looking all natural, you know? Like you can pull the shadow around to an extent, but I still end up having quite an edge to deal with. I'm gonna to try to fill in with a little more shadow here, actually with this other side. I mean, it just, it takes some finesse, honestly, to get this done. And you might think of it as, you know, one and done, stamp it on and you're good, but you it, it does take a little bit of dealing with to get it all done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side here. There we go, there's my little stamp. I think maybe if this other side wasn't like just a flat angled brush, maybe it would be easier to work the shadow inward. I'm gonna actually bring in this crease brush that was provided in with the little brush foursome and try that. I think I got a lighter application when I stamped on this eye because you can see that's blending a little bit more. This one's still looking kind of dark out there on the outside. See, now I'm finding myself using this brush, this little uh, crease brush going back into the product and just kind of filling in and basically doing what I would have done shadow-wise to start with, kind of just trying to lessen the edge on the outer corner. <laughs> Separate blender brush, maybe. Helped a little. And another technique that I could do there with this brush, they show it on the other side, you could stamp it like d directly on the outer corner of the eye, not try to do the little lifted outer V so much, and then you could use the angled side to actually line your lash line because this darkest shade is probably dark enough to act as a pretty good eyeliner there. But I'm not gonna do that today because I have a mascara from this line that I wanna show, and I think you'll be able to see what it's doing better if I don't have eyeliner on. But one more thing before I move on, onto the mascara, I couldn't really show you this and that eye stamper brush in the same video because they're both pertaining to the eyeshadow application here, but I got these even eye stencils. I guess these could be eyeliner or eyeshadow application, but I played with these once before and these are a eye stencil basically that you lay down here on your upper cheek. It basically can give you this kind of edge that I was going for here today, um, almost in place of that tape method, but these are reusable. You can put them down again and again. But then you can just go hog wild with your brush and you know take your shadow out and just overlap that little stencil that you've got there and then get a really clean edge on the outside of your eye look and get that lifted idea, which I think goes a heck of a lot faster than this eye stamper thing. And I will try to show these in an upcoming video 
video just work it in somehow so you can see them but for now I just wanted to show you how that eye stamper brush worked I really don't think it made my life easier I found myself needing to blend a lot more than I normally would just to undo the harsh look of the edge the next thing that I got from this line is called the flex and curl mascara with the lash shield so what comes with this is a mascara with a wand that actually has the capability of bending and then there's also this little eye shield here and they say you're going to put it like this and your eyeshadow look is going to be protected as you apply your mascara and then there's another end to it and you could use that to comb through your lashes or your brows so I'm going to start out and curl my lashes here and then you could sit it this way if you wanted to protect underneath your eye but if you're going to go and try to do your upper lash application this is how you'd put it on and so here's the mascara. This is a rubber bristle brush. It's kind of thick with bristles, but they're not super long. Honestly reminds me a little bit of the original CoverGirl Lash Blast. And then watch this, when I turn the end here, that brush is bending. See that? Straight bent. And I do think bending it does make it kind of easy to use here, but as you can see, the idea is that I can take that brush and press it up against this little guard and get my lashes fully coated without messing up my eye look. Which, let's be honest, that's something we all do from time to time. Don't we all get careless with our mascara and end up dabbing it right on our eyelid? However, that feels... I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for which, which feels more free and fast and easy. Having this thing here and going up against it. I could see that being good for some people maybe, but yet this is where my comfort level lies. I mean, I apply mascara to my eyes almost every single day and I feel like I can see to get in there. Like you see what I'm doing with my mirror here? I'm holding it down here. I'm seeing exactly where that mascara wand's going and that's pretty much how I apply mascara every single day. If you didn't always do it that way and you were just really scared about making a mess, then maybe the guard is the right thing for you. But for me, I do love the bent brush aspect. I can get to those harder to reach spots really easily, but I'm pretty much doing it faster and getting a better view of everything when I'm holding my mirror down here. So that's one coat on the one eye. It's not, it's not really doing enough for me, honestly. It's certainly not building up as fast as like Lash Paradise is. I just went in for more for a second coat. It's lengthening all right. It's just not giving me that huge lash look. Now this is not the worst mascara ever because it's not clumping me up. It definitely is lengthening. And again, I like what this uh, brush is capable of doing. But that guard just sort of was slowing me down, you know? I'm gonna do a little bit on the lower lashes. Today will be the first time I'm trying this on lower lashes. We'll see how that wears. Hopefully it doesn't smudge on me. A lot of things do. Here's the eyes. Um, the first time I used that mascara, I actually went on with three coats. It takes about three coats of this Whoosh mascara to get me to where Lash Paradise is at one coat. So that's kind of disappointing and I'm already seeing the curls start to sort of fall from my lashes somewhat. But the last thing I'm gonna show in this video is the spin on on lip gloss with rotating tip. Yes, they've even done something with lip gloss to make it, I don't know, different, new. So this color is called Glam Taupe that I got here. It's got some shimmer uh, and it's just kind of a shimmery neutral, I guess. Here's the product. You know, it's looking like a regular doe foot basically, except there's not one side that's kind of flattened out. So it's all just sort of rounded. And I'm gonna try to get in focus here and close enough up so you can see. This is just gonna roll right on y'all. Did you see that rotating? Did you see it? Now that applied, look at, look at what's happening here. Ugh, a lot of gloss. And it really gooped up on me there. Mm. See, that roll-on application is no joke because that applies a lot. There's a lot on the wand when you take it out and if you were just to dab it on your lips, maybe similar to what you might do with a normal lip gloss applicator, you probably wouldn't get as much product on your lips as I do right now. Like I can literally see some of the product catching between the two lips. But it's a pretty color, it's shiny, it's got that little bit of nude in there, but I'm seeing some of my natural lip color through it. The gloss feels really comfortable, it actually feels like a moisturizing 
amazing lip gloss and when I was wearing this the other day I thought the staying power was pretty decent actually. There's a thickness to the gloss that helps it kind of adhere to the lips but yet it's not a sticky thickness. So yeah pretty everyday shade, um, nice quality on the gloss but I don't know that the roll-on concept other than being cool like I do find it very cool to watch that roll onto my lips. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think the world was really waiting for that you know in a product. I think if you're looking for a good quality like moisturizing lip gloss uh, maybe check out the ones that Neutrogena has. I think in their Hydro Boost line they recently came out with some nice like kind of moisturizing glosses and you could get something probably pretty similar to this shade. What I'm gonna do guys is actually give my lashes just a very gentle and quick recurl here because they are falling. And so just finished look face-wise, very happy with everything on the face actually. The coverage level on the concealers was really good and I feel like I'm rather hard to please with concealers and that was able to um, do some good stuff for under eye circles, discoloration, a little bit of redness around the nose. It seemed to tackle my problem areas pretty well. And yes, this is an actual scrunchie on my wrist here. Uh, the powders were nice quality in here, like really nice textures to the powders. The powders actually packed in a little extra coverage also so very nicely pigmented blushes, love the highlight. The eyeshadows were pretty good, I think, just for daily wear, easy use. There's a nice size mirror in here if you're traveling, and I really can't think of other palettes that I have that provide quite this much multitasking. I guess the one thing that's coming to mind is that It Cosmetics Most Wish For palette, but that was a limited edition holiday type release, and that had like your eye correctors and different things. But I know how hectic some mornings can be, you know, around here just trying to get a quick face of makeup on and having it all in one palette like this definitely makes it easy and if you were just going to get this one palette you know what is left out well you need to grab for a brow product a mascara and a lip and so those are three pretty small additions, you know, to this kit, I guess outside of like a moisturizer or something that you put on first. So the fold out face, again, I really enjoy it. I think they packed in quality products and a lot of them. The corner brush, eye stamper, for me, this didn't make my life any easier. I felt like I was spending more time blending out the um, stamped on shape that this gave me. And as far as the quality of the brush goes, it's a very even cut. It's able to do exactly what they want it to do, which is evenly stamp on color, you know. It can help you even out the shape on each side. It's just, it takes some time, I think, to blend it out. I'm also not really digging the mascara. It just took me multiple coats to achieve the same effect that I get with my current favorite mascara. And this little guard, wow, while it may be a good thing for some people, I'm not saying like nobody would like this. For me, I really rely on holding my mirror and kind of looking up at my mascara application as I go and this sort of takes away that ability. The lip gloss, a nice quality lip gloss product. The spin on aspect actually I think loads on maybe a bit more gloss than is necessary. While it is a cool idea, I don't think we really needed to reinvent the wheel so to speak as far as lip gloss wands. So guys, I hope this this video gave you a little insight on the Whoosh Beauty line, which is now available at Ulta. If you were curious about it, maybe this um, let you know how it would work. And I will try to demonstrate these even eye stencils in another video so you can see how those go as well. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!